Box Gutter Installation The box gutter comes attached to the eaves beam. Ensure the box gutter is adequately supported until it's permanently fixed to the host wall. Fixing the box gutter braces Ensure that the box gutter is level and set the braces 600mm apart along the length of the box gutter. Using the 8mm drill bits, pre-drill holes through the box gutter braces and into sound masonry. Primary seal to host wall. Self-adhesive flashing tape is included in your conservatory kit. This product is suitable for use where the host wall is flat and even, for example face brickwork. The tape is provided as a means of temporarily sealing the conservatory from water ingress. Cut the flashing tape and apply the flashing tape to the host wall. The flashing tape should run down three courses of brick and run into the drainage channel. Although the flashing tape, if applied in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions, can function for many years, it's not a long-term substitute for traditional lead flashing. We would recommend that you employ an experienced builder to carry out lead flashing works during the construction of your conservatory or at some time in the near future. Eaves Beam Installation We recommend at this point that you recheck the internal dimensions, width and projection and check the measurements across the internal corners which should be the same. Silicone seal the gaps between the front of the eaves beam external trim and the front of the windows to create a watertight seal. Position the eaves beam centrally on top of the windows. The inside face of the overhang will sit against the front face of the panels and the end of the eaves beam will be flush with the outer face of the side panels. The eaves beam pieces will also require joining at the corners. They're joined by using two eaves beam joiners which slot together and slide into the channels on the inside of the eaves beam. Apply a bead of silicone to the cut faces of the eaves beam prior to joining. Fix the eaves beam joiners into position with the 38mm silver screws through the pre-drilled holes. Connect the eaves beam and box gutter assembly to the rest of the eaves beam using the eaves beam corner joiner. Once assembled on top of the panels, Drill through the eaves beam only using a long reach 5mm drill 100mm from the edge of each window. The first holes from the end of the eaves beam should be at 100mm to ensure it's fastened into the window. Power drive the fixing screws through the holes in the eaves beam and into the head of the window. Ridge installation. Temporarily support the ridge assembly in the correct position. Start the ridge assembly by attaching the Victorian hip bars to the boss end. Slot the holes in the top of the spar over the M5 by 25mm bolts in the ridge. Slot the holes at the bottom of the Victorian hip bar over the M5 bolts located in the bolt retainers that sit either side of the eaves beam corner. Loosely screw on the M5 locking nuts without tightening. Repeat on the other side. Attach the first starter bar over the single bolt retainer in the eaves beam. Locate the holes in the top of the starter spar over the M5 by 25mm bolt in the ridge. Loosely screw on the M5 locking nuts without tightening. Use your installation guide to carry out checks. Drill and fix the wall bars using fixings positioned 150mm from each end and no more than 600mm apart, avoiding mortar beds. Some fixings shown in this DVD are for studio build only. Please refer to your installation guide for the correct fixings required. Glazing bar installation. The transom glazing bars need to be installed next. To identify the glazing bar positions for your conservatory, refer to your diagram. The glazing bars can then be counted anti-clockwise around the layout. Start with any glazing bars that connect to the ridge. After removing the protective film from the glazing bar undercladding, slot the transom glazing bar holes over the bolts in the double bolt retainers located in the ridge. Repeat for the holes at the bottom of the glazing bars which connect to the bolt retainers located in the eaves beam. Loosely thread on the M5 flange nuts. 
Don't tighten at this stage. Repeat for all glazing bars that connect to the ridge. Quarter boss variable wall plate. Setting the ridge height. Place the wall plate up against the host wall until the bottom of the legs are level with the marked line on the wall. Position along the width of the conservatory until it's against the ridge assembly. The legs of the wall plate and the ridge assembly should be on the same level. Pre-drill a hole through the wall plate and into sound masonry. The hole should be approximately 150 mm from each end and 500 mm from each other. Secure the wall plate in place with 8 by 60 mm fixing bolts. Check for level before fixing securely. Some fixings shown in this DVD are for studio build only. Please refer to your installation guide for the correct fixings required. Once the wall plate is in position, fit the wing onto it. Select the starter bar which sits onto the wall plate quarter boss end against the house wall. Slot the bottom of the starter bar over the single pivot bolt in the eaves beam and loosely thread on the M5 flange nut. Fix the starter bar to the quarter boss using an M5 by 25mm bolt and loosely thread on the flange nut. Now permanently fix the starter bar to the host wall, drilling through the starter bars and the wall fixing into place using 60mm fixing bolts. Some fixings shown in this DVD are for studio build only. Please refer to your installation guide for the correct fixings required. Attach the top of the hip bar to the quarter boss end with two single bolt retainers positioned underneath the quarter boss end. Position the holes at the bottom of the spar over the single bolt retainers located either side of the eaves beam corner. When all the bars and quarter boss end are correctly positioned and the wall plate is still level, tighten all M5 locking nuts. Valley installation. Fitting valley assembly. First, ensure that the glazing support tape is attached to the valley wings. Position the pre-drilled holes in the top of the valley wings over the M5 by 25mm bolts located in the single bolt retainers in the wall plate and the fixed ridge. Ensure that the valley center is pushed as far up the ridge as possible. Next, locate the pre-drilled holes at the bottom of the valley wings over the M5 by 25mm bolts located in the single bolt retainers in the eaves beam on the internal corner. Fitting Valley Bars The valley bars run from the wall plate and into the valley. They are cut at an angle along the bottom face. Hook the first valley spar over the M5 by 25mm bolts in the double bolt retainers located in the wall plate. Position the holes at the bottom of the valley spar over the pre-drilled holes in the valley wings. From the underside, slot the M5 by 25mm bolts through the pre-drilled holes in the valley spar. Do not tighten. Repeat for every valley bar. When all the valley bars that connect to the wall plate are in position, install the valley bars for the ridge and the valley wings. When all the valley bars are in position, carry out checks by referring to your roof plan. Tighten all M5 locking nuts. Jack rafter installation. The set of glazing bars that connect to the hip, the jack rafters, should now be fitted. The jack rafters have tops which are cut at an angle and when in position will run perpendicular from the eaves beam until they meet and attach to the hips. Before attaching the jack rafter, slide the jack rafter under cladding down and away from the top end of the jack rafter. Remember to remove the protective film. Locate the jack rafter arm onto the domed bolt and loosely attach the M6 flange nut. Do not tighten. Slide the undercladding back to the top of the jack rafter and tight up against the hip undercladding. Locate the jack rafter onto the bolts in the eaves beam and loosely attach the M5 flange nuts. Prior to tightening any M5 locking nuts, it's recommended that you perform some glazing bar position checks. The positions of the intermediate glazing bars are confirmed by performing dimensional checks between the rafter centers. 
These dimensions, shown on your roof plan, are taken from the center line of the transom glazing bars. If all the glazing bars and jack rafters are correctly positioned, tighten all M5 and M6 flange nuts.